Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Imperial College London. My name is Nick Jennings, and I'm the Vice Provost for Research and Enterprise here at the College. And it's a pleasure for me uh, to welcome you to the College and to the Grantham Annual Lecture, which is going to be given by Mr. Al Gore. It's, I'm delighted to see so many people in the room and in the various other bits around campus where this talk is being streamed live. We had many, many people who wanted to come today, and so you in the room are the, are the lucky ones, um, and also those around college as well will be able to see this. For those who are less familiar with Imperial, Imperial College London is a leading university that focuses on engineering, science, medicine, and business. It's a world top 10 university famed for its research and its education and its enterprise. Now, one of the key strengths of Imperial is our multidisciplinary research. It's something we very much pride ourselves on. And a key part of that multidisciplinary research landscape is our global challenge institutes. We have six global challenge institutes that tackle big societal problems. And the Grantham Institute on climate change is one of those six institutes. It was set up in 2007 by a generous donation from the Grantham Foundation, uh, from the Grantham Foundation. And this lecture and a, the series of events that are happening during the year are part of a 10-year anniversary program. So this and many other things will, will follow from this. The aims of the institute are to conduct multidisciplinary research and to bring together people from around college and outside to make sure that we're making the most of all the science that we have going on in all the different departments. It's to provide thought leadership and policy input to help shape the debate in this really important area, to communicate knowledge and information, and also to educate the next generation of leaders in this really important area. So the institutes in general and the Grantham Institute in particular are really fundamental to what, what we do at Imperial and our ethos. So I would like to welcome you all today and I'm going to now hand over to uh, Professor Sir Brian Hoskins who's going to introduce the lecturer speaker. Thank you very much. Well, let me add my welcome to you all here today for a very special lecture for a, by a very special person. It's a special time for the Grantham Institute as we are 10 years old now, and uh, we've been established then as Imperial's hub for climate change and the environment, and I was delighted to be its first director. And over those 10 years, um, I think we've achieved a fair bit. We, with our partners, we've become a major source of research, training, and innovation. And we've worked with our partners and those in other sectors to confront this climate crisis, which we're going to hear about today, and to contribute more generally to a vision for a sustainable and resilient society. So we now have 25 staff. 142 PhD and master's students associated with us and 196 affiliates, which uh, is a bit different from 10 years ago, I can tell you. Throughout that time, um, we've had excellent support from the Grantham Foundation for the Protection of the Environment. Let me just say this lecture is not being recorded or broadcast, but uh, we encourage those of you who like to do such things to use the hashtag Grantham10, so please do. It is actually being just streamed to the foyer of, of Imperial College, and I'm sure there are many people there. So for this special lecture, I am absolutely delighted to, to uh, welcome and introduce our special speaker then, Mr. Al Gore. So... By 2001, he'd spent 24 years in elected positions in Washington as congressman, senator, and vice president. And he, th he then turned a lot of his attention to a sustainable world and to climate, the mitigation of climate change in particular. And his dedication and tireless activism and huge circle of influence 
with those, he's driven forward the agenda in a unique manner. And he's been extremely successful in bringing climate change and the need for, public, for action to public attention. So very successful. And in 2007, he was the star of the Oscar-winning film, An Inconvenient Truth. And he was actually awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in that year. And he shared this with the IPCC. And I'm very proud of my 1,000th of a Nobel Prize to share with him. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> amongst the many things he is currently doing, he chairs Climate Reality Project, which has done an amazing job training volunteer climate leaders around the world. 7,800 so far in 126 countries. And this year, he's been the star of another film, An Inconvenient Sequel, Truth to Power. And I thought I would just quote from some of the, the material around that film. He continues his tireless fight and pursues the inspirational idea that the perils of climate change can be overcome with human ingenuity and passion. It is a really great pleasure to introduce our special Grantham Annual Lecturer, Mr. Al Gore. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Hoskins. Uh, it, it really is an honor to be introduced to, by you and to uh, Vice Provost uh, Nick Jennings. Thank you very much for getting us off to a good start, and to uh, Martin Siegert, uh, and to Joanna Haig, uh, the co-directors of the Institute. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, to all the distinguished guests who are here, I have um, more than a few friends here, and I, I want to acknowledge uh, Lord Nick Stern, who is really the star of my latest movie, uh, <laughs> and <laughs> plays a prominent role uh, in it, and, and ha I've learned a lot from Nick over the years, and Professor Chris Rapley, from whom I've learned a lot about Antarctica, among other subjects. Um, and some of my colleagues from uh, Generation Investment Management are here, Sedef uh, Cochran Turk, uh, and Anthony Wolf, and uh, Phoebe Harapark. I, I appreciate them uh, coming by today as well. Uh, congratulations to the Grantham Institute and this uh, 10th year in pursuit of a worthy goal, a sustainable, resilient, zero-carbon society. That, that's a well-chosen phrase, and as I say, a worthy goal. And it is a, a great pleasure to return to Imperial College. Uh, during its 110th year, I have visited here before, unheralded, uh, in pursuit of knowledge and uh, found more than I could deal with, actually. <laughs> uh, but uh, thank you to you, uh, Professor Hoskins, and your colleagues who were very generous uh, with their time on my previous visit, uh, showing great pa patience and letting me ask an endless series of questions. <clears throat> and excuse me for reading. I often, I'm used to giving slideshows and uh, I, uh, since this is a lecture and not a speech, I <laughs> thought that I should actually write it out. Um, but thank you for this uh, invitation uh, to speak about the climate crisis and its uh, solutions, and to offer a few words at the outset about the closely related democracy crisis, which is in its uh, essence a crisis of epistemology. Now, that's a word I don't frequently use. <laughs> I wrote a book called The Assault on Reason 10 years ago, and I'm embarrassed to tell you that I had to look up the word epistemology. And it means, basically, you all know this, of course, how we collectively determine what is true rather than false, or perhaps more accurately, what is highly likely to be true rather than false. We are witnessing in several societies, including especially my own in the United States, an ongoing effort to invert what Western thought has depended upon since the Renaissance, 
the primacy of fact over dogma and the rise of democratic systems of self-governance based on reason as a means to constrain power by testing self-aggrandizing narratives against reality. There are many reasons for this wave of populist authoritarianism, uh, the decades-long stagnation of middle-income wages due almost certainly to uh, the centrifugal force of hyper-globalization flinging jobs to lower-wage venues, uh, failures of policy, capture of policy by elites, and more recently, perhaps uh, the uh, uh, new impact of intelligent automation. Uh, which uh, may make the so-called Luddite fallacy a fallacy itself. But without going into the reasons it exists, it does exist. And it has given uh, uh, succor to those who want to undermine reason, question well-established facts, uh, and experience nostalgia for strongman politics. Disbelief in climate change reflects not just the existence of alternative facts, a new phrase that we all heard for the first time this, this year, but the existence of a whole alternative reality in which millions of people, perhaps especially again in the US, uh, now live. That alternative reality extends to other domains with assertions that uh, inoculations cause autism, uh, tax cuts negate deficits, tens of millions of guns bear no relationship whatsoever to tens of thousands of shooting deaths, complete and total deregulation is the key to sustained economic growth, uh, the US government is irredeemably hostile to personal liberty, former President Obama is a Muslim, <laughs> Putin can be taken at his word, and to return to where the list began, climate change is a hoax made in China. 